Hello everyone and welcome to another update video about NC Warfare's latest update 0.36. From a technical perspective, this is the biggest update NC Warfare 3 has ever received. And being a programmer myself, I really enjoyed adding triggers and a scripting system to the game. Let's start with some small features and then go over scripting and triggers. The first new feature are settings for individual light objects. You can now turn them off by default to enable them later by a script. You can also deactivate shadows which will greatly increase the performance while using a lot of lights. There are also new alarm objects which can be controlled by scripts and you can choose from a variety of different sounds, adjust volume and the range. To allow interactions with the new scripting features, there are different objects like switches, buttons, levers, code locks, locks and such slides. Ok, let's move on to the most important part of this update. Using scripting and triggers I can control various aspects of the battle. Simple things like light and door switches or more complex stuff like killing or controlling units. There is also a more in-depth steam guide available which I really recommend reading. You can find it in the description below. In the following parts of this video I'll just explain the features of the scripting mode and how it works based on examples. To open the scripting mode press this button. Everything will be rendered in white but you can still look around. One of the most important objects of the scripting mode are triggers. Triggers can be used to detect when a unit enters, stays or leaves an area. Place triggers can be selected to adjust their position and size. I'll explain how to use triggers in a second, but let's have a look at another type of objects first. Custom lights. We can place them similar to triggers. For selected lights we can adjust the range, intensity and even the color. These lights can be used if you want to create a certain atmosphere in an area. With the triggers, buttons, lights and various other objects, we need a way to add some functionality to them. In order to do that, there is a visual scripting system which allows you to create logic by placing and connecting different commands instead of writing code. To create a script, select an object in the scripting mode. On the right side, you can attach scripts to this object, give it a name and a description to remember what it's doing. This is the script editor. In the top left corner, you can see which script you are editing. In the top right corner, you can close the editor and your progress will be saved. In the bottom left corner, you can see the zoom level, save, load and add notes. There are also useful mouse and keyboard controls like zooming with the mouse wheel, selecting notes and connections by clicking on them, Holding Shift or Control allows you to select multiple. Pressing B enables the box selection mode. The Delete key deletes selected elements. You can copy and paste selected elements with Control C and Control V. And move selected notes by dragging them around with the left mouse button. To add notes, press the Space button or use the button in the bottom left corner of the screen. This will open a panel which shows all available notes sorted in categories and you can also search for specific nodes. Let's begin with a basic example. The goal is to use a trigger to add 100 damage to every unit that enters the area. I already placed two units. The blue one is a guard mode and the red one will advance towards the blue unit. I enter the scripting mode and place a cube trigger to where the unit would move. Then I select it and add a new script called add damage. The way how scripts begin is with an event. In this case I want the script to run when a unit enters a trigger. So the event I'm looking for is trigger enter. As you can see, the script requires a reference to a trigger. Because there could be many different triggers in a battle, but I only want this event to be triggered from a specific one. By default, the reference object will be the one the script is attached to. If you want to change it, you can just click the button and select the trigger you want to use. Now we have an entry point for the script, so I want to add a node to add damage. To execute the node when a unit enters the trigger, I have to connect these two control flow points. The add damage node is still missing inputs. Since there can be multiple units in a battle, we have to choose which one we want to add damage to. As you can see, the trigger event has an output for the unit which entered the area. So let's use this. However, I can't connect the unit output to the health input. 
because they are different types. To connect the unit from the trigger, I have to get its health reference. To do that, I insert another node in between. Then I connect the unit output to the unit input and the health output to the health input. That way we basically connected the unit from the trigger event to the health input of the add damage event. In addition to that, the add damage node also needs to know how much damage to apply, so I add a float node, which is basically a decimal number, and connect it to the amount input. With this script, the event will be executed first, then the unit to health node will use the unit output of the event node to transform it to a health reference, which will then be used by the add damage node. And for the amount of damage, there is a simple input node. Let's see if this works. The 100 damage I added should be enough to kill the red unit once it enters the trigger. Let's have a look at another example. This time I have a door which is locked by default and I want to use this button to open the door and enable the status light. Let's enter the script mode again, select the button and add a script to it. I want the script to run when the button is pressed, so I add a button press event node. And to open the door I add an open node which I'll connect to the event. As you can see, the open node requires a door input because it needs to know which door to open. So I add a door input node. By default, this will be set to none, so I have to select the door. Now I can connect the door input and the door opening part should work. For the status light, I search for set is on and select the node for light objects. I also have to connect this node to the button press event. Just like for the door, it needs a light input, so I'll add it real quick. It also needs a pool input, which controls whether the light will be set on or off. To provide that, I add a pool node, enable it and connect it to the input. Let's see if the script works. As you can see, the door is locked, but when I press the button, the light goes on and the door opens, so I can walk through. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoy these new features. If requested, I can provide more information about the scripting system, but I really recommend to read the Steam guide to get started. There are also a lot of examples in it. Thanks for watching.